After escaping from Winterfell, Sansa and Theon flee into the Wolfswood, with the Bolton forces in hot pursuit. They cross a stream and briefly take shelter under an uprooted tree, where Theon hugs Sansa to keep her warm. Shortly after, however, they are found by the Bolton men and hounds. Theon urges Sansa to flee to the safety of her half-brother John at Castle Black. But Sansa refuses to leave Theon behind to the Boltons. Brienne and Podrick appear just in time and fight off the soldiers, killing them all. Brienne once again offers her service to Sansa, who this time readily accepts, reciting her vows. On the way to Castle Black, Brienne reveals to Sansa how she briefly met Arya near the Bloody Gate. Sansa is delighted to hear that her sister is still alive and well. Theon decides to part with the group and head to the Iron Islands. Sansa implores Theon to come with them as Jon will protect them from Ramsay but Theon refuses, fearing Jon will have him executed as Theon betrayed Rob, beheaded their master at arms Sir Roderick, and killed those two boys. Sansa promises Theon she will tell Jon the truth about Bran and Rickon being alive, that Theon didn't kill him, and wants him to join the Night's Watch so all his crimes can be forgiven. Theon responds he still killed two farm boys and reminds Sansa of his crimes against House Stark, for which Jon will never forgive him. He reveals he does not want to be forgiven as he can never make up for his crimes against Sansa and Jon's family. When Sansa realizes that Theon cannot be convinced to come with them, she bids him farewell, and the two share a tender hug. Sansa, Brienne, and Podrick arrive soon at Castle Black where they find Jon. At first, both siblings are too stunned to even speak when they see each other, but quickly share a loving embrace after their long and tragic separation. As Jon offers Sansa food, they reminisce about their happy childhood and how they both regret ever leaving Winterfell. Sansa apologizes to Jon for her dismissive treatment of him while growing up, to which Jon responds that there is nothing to apologize for. When they resolve to stick together, Sansa says the only place they can go now is home. She then asks him to help her reclaim their home from the Boltons. However, Jon tells her that he is tired of fighting, that he had done nothing but fight since he left home, and that he was killed for it. Although Sansa appears to accept his choice, she tells him that she will reclaim Winterfell and the North, with or without his help. As Sansa and Jon share a meal with Edison Tollett, Tormund, Podrick, and Brienne, a messenger arrives from Winterfell with a letter from Ramsay. In the letter, Ramsay states that he has Rickon prisoner at Winterfell and if Sansa is not returned, he will slaughter every wildling under Jon's protection, let his men rape Sansa, and feed Jon and Rickon to his dogs. Ramsay signs the letter, Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North, prompting Sansa to reveal Ramsay killed his father. When Tormund asks Sansa how many Ramsay has in his army and Sansa recalls 5,000, John asks Tormund how many he has who are able to fight. Tormund replies that they have only 2,000 men and women in shape to fight, not enough to match Ramsay's 5,000. Sansa tells John that the Houses of the North will unite behind him as the son of the last true Warden of the North and they need to go back to Winterfell to save it and their brother. John agrees to take Ramsay down so they save Rickon and take back their home. Later, Sansa receives a letter from Peter asking to meet in Mull's town. Accompanied by Brienne, they meet in a ruined house, and Sansa angrily tells Baelish the details of her wedding night, asking if he knew the truth about Ramsay all along. Instead, Baelish changes the subject, informing Sansa he has rallied the Knights of the Vale to help her, along with news that her great-uncle Brynden has recaptured Riverrun. Sansa takes an alliance with the Blackfish into consideration, but refuses help from Baelish, warning him never to speak to her again. She says she has an army. Peter responds it's her brother's army and adds, half-brother. At a war meeting at Castle Black, Sansa and John discuss which of the northern houses they can rely on to support them. As the Karstarks and Umbers have already sided with House Bolton, Sir Davos suggests asking House Manderley. When Jon decides to rally the two dozen houses still loyal to the Starks, Sansa informs him they can add House Tully to the list, but lies about how she acquired the information. After the meeting, Sansa plans to send Brienne to Riverrun, as the Boltons could intercept any raven sent there. Brienne is worried about leaving her and while Brienne feels Jon is trustworthy, she is dubious about the other men. Sansa assures Brienne that John will keep her safe, he is her brother and she trusts him. Brienne counters by asking Sansa why she lied to John about meeting with Baelish. Before riding south, Sansa gives John a new cloak she had made for him styled after their fathers. 
Sansa and John arrive at Bear Island and are summoned before Lyanna Mormont. John asks for the assistance of House Mormont in the upcoming battle for Winterfell to help them save their brother, as House Mormont has pledged themselves to House Stark. However, Lyanna tells him that he is a Snow and Sansa is a Bolton. Sansa says that she did what she had to do, but she didn't want it. When Sansa attempts to flatter Lyanna and John explains how he served under Lyanna's uncle Lord Commander Jor Mormont, Lyanna wants them to get to the point. Sir Davos steps in and manages to convince Lyanna to pledge her allegiance, telling of the coming threat of the White Walkers, however, a mere 62 men are contributed. Sansa and John later travel to Deepwood Mott, to ask for the assistance of House Glover. They receive a frosty reception from Robert Glover, who has just reclaimed Deepwood Mott from the Ironborn. When John fails to bring him around, Sansa tells Robert that the Glovers are pledged to House Stark, and sworn to fight when called upon. Robert responds he pledged to House Stark and fought for Rob Stark but it cost the Glovers their home and many lives, due to Rob's lack of stability following his marriage to Talisa. Sansa and John are only able to recruit a few northern houses and only gain a few hundred men. John says they should strike Winterfell immediately before the coming storm and before Ramsay can gather more men. Sansa says they don't have enough men and wants to go to Castle Serwyn to try and persuade Lord Serwyn. However, John reflects on their lack of time. When John refuses to change his mind, Sansa writes a letter to an unknown party, but does not tell John, for reinforcements. Sansa and John meet with Ramsay on the day before battle. Ramsay tries to taunt Sansa, but she remains stoic. She asks Ramsay how do they know if he truly has the younger brother Rickon. Small Hon answers her question by throwing the decapitated head of Rickon's direwolf shaggy dog into their view. As Ramsay proceeds to tell the Starks what to do if they want to save Rickon, Sansa cuts him off by telling him that he is going to die the next day and rides off. After a meeting where Jon discusses battle plans with Tormund and Davos, Sansa admonishes Jon for attacking with too few men, saying that they need a larger force. Jon agrees they don't have enough men but responds this is the largest army they could possibly gather, saying they have pleaded with every house who would have them and the Blackfish can't help. Sansa warns Jon that Ramsay won't fall into Jon's trap, Ramsay is the one who lays traps, and Ramsay has been playing with people all his life. John responds he has faced worse than Ramsay Bolton, to which she replies, you don't know him. When John asks how do they get Rickon back, Sansa tells him we'll never get him back alive. John refuses to give up on their brother and Sansa tells John that Ramsay wants him to make a mistake. John asks Sansa what he should do differently but Sansa responds she doesn't know about battles and implores her brother not to do what Ramsay wants him to do. When they finish arguing, Sansa tells John that if Ramsay wins, she will die before she goes back to him. John vows to protect Sansa, to which she cynically replies that no one can keep anyone safe. Sansa is not present during the premise of the Battle of the Bastards, in which Rickon is killed by Ramsay. As the battle is nearing an end and all hope seems lost, a distant horn is heard sounding in the distance. Sansa and Peter Baelish, to whom Sansa had sent the raven, arrive with the Knights of the Vale to help John and his army reclaim Winterfell. The Vale forces run down the advancing Bolton forces. After Winterfell is breached, Sansa enters the Winterfell courtyard and witnesses John defeat Ramsay in single combat, though John momentarily goes into a wild frenzy and begins to pummel Ramsay, he spares Ramsay out of respect for Sansa. With the Stark banners hanging in Winterfell once more, Sansa sees Rickon's dead body, concluding to ask John where Ramsay is. Sansa confronts a bloodied and bound Ramsay in the kennels. He tries to goad her by telling her how she will never be rid of him because he is, part of now. Although Sansa does not deny his implication that she herself will always remember him, she calmly retorts that his house is about to become extinct and that all memory of Ramsay to the rest of the world will soon disappear, just before an ominous growl from one of his hounds reveals his impending doom. Ramsay responds that his dogs are loyal to him, but Sansa reminds her husband that he revealed he had been starving his dogs for seven days. The dogs approach Ramsay and he desperately attempts to order them to heal but after a brief moment of hesitation, one of the hounds bites him. As they begin to tear Ramsay apart while he screams, Sansa walks away with a small smile. With Winterfell firmly under stark control, Sansa joins Jon on the ramparts as he watches an exiled Melisandre heading south. He tells her that he is having the Lord's Chambers prepared for her. Although she protests that he should have it, 
John refuses, telling his sister he is not a Stark. Sansa tells John that he is a Stark to her, but he still refuses, telling Sansa that she deserves it as the Lady of Winterfell and because the Knights of the Vale came because of her, resulting in their victory. John asks her about Littlefinger and whether they can trust him, to which she insists that they cannot. Sansa apologizes for not telling him about the Knights of the Vale. While he understands why she didn't tell him about Baelish, John insists that they have to trust each other completely now that they have so many enemies. He kisses her on the forehead and when he turns to leave, Sansa calls him back. She smiles as she tells John that a white raven arrived from the citadel, announcing the arrival of winter as their father had always predicted. John returns her smile. Sansa is later found by Littlefinger in the Godswood. She tells him about how she had prayed in it every day as a little girl, always dreaming of being somewhere else. She then asks what he truly wants, and he tells her what his ultimate ambition is, himself sitting on the Iron Throne with Sansa at his side. He tries to kiss her but she rebukes him. As she walks away, he tells her that although he had officially aligned House Arryn with House Stark, reprisals would come from King's Landing. Sansa reminds Littlefinger he's declared for other houses before and this did not stop him from switching sides to ensure his own interests. Before she leaves, Littlefinger once again reminds her of Jon's illegitimate birth. With the Stark victory, the remaining Northern Lords joined by the Vale Lords arrive at Winterfell to discuss the new situation in the North. Some, such as Lord Yon Royce, object to the Wildlings' presence, but Tormund responds they were invited. The Lords of both the North and the Vale claim that they need to return to their homes before the winter hits but Jon warns them that the war is not over, the true enemy, won't wait out the storm. He brings the storm. At this point, Lyanna Mormont stands up and chastises the assembled Northmen for refusing House Stark's call in the greatest hour of need. Lyanna proclaims House Mormont remembers and says, The North remembers. We know no king but the king in the North whose name is Stark. She says that she doesn't care if John is a bastard son because he has Ned Stark's blood in his veins. With that, she acclaims John as the king in the North, as his brother, Rob had been before him. Lyanna's speech is followed by a similar declaration from both Lord Wyman Manderley of the White Harbour and Lord Glover of Deepwood Mott. The assembled lords of the North and the Vale acclaim John as the king in the North. John looks at Sansa, and she smiles back at him, but her smile fades when she glances at Littlefinger, the only other person not cheering, who gives her an unimpressed and knowing look. 